the chemistry between us is like a four tier filter. Having other people that you trust and respect, it just helps drive where that track is going. A lot of different things that we all have different strengths in that as a collective is bigger than just, you know, making beats and being producer. We're really just, we're trying to handle the business part of the music business instead of just making beats and then going home. The way we got into K-pop was we were working with a writer out here. It was the first time we worked with him. And he just out of nowhere asked us, have we ever been to Korea? He ended up introducing us to his manager who then connected us over to the record label SM Entertainment. K-pop's a little different on um, how we would approach, you know, approach our beats. I think for us, we base a lot of what we make based off feeling. Not to say they, they, they don't, but theirs is very, they know exactly what they want. You know what I mean? They're like, yo, we want exactly this at this tempo. It's very, very structured. To me, at least, the, the most important part of a song is melody. That's what's cool about K-pop. You know, that's their most important part of the song. So we kind of build everything around the chord structures and their different sections that they have, intro, verse. So we kind of make the song with that and all that stuff in mind. So we show up to SM and what they usually do before our sessions, they sit us around and they go, hey, this is what we're kind of looking for for the group. So yeah, once we broke from that, you know, Jeremy just ran and, you know, he ran into the room. I like to always start with a progression and it came to me pretty fast. I just, I don't know, I just, when the, the sound itself inspires you. One of my favorite go-to synths is Salenth. It's my favorite VST for anything synth oriented. When I was creating that, uh, I remember Ray was in the common area and I just, I had, the door was cracked. And so I just hear a, that's dope. <laughs> and I was like, all right, cool. So I'm onto something. Yeah. So um, that's when, all, when Ray got up and came in and was looking for, you know, a lot of percussion stuff. With the kick, I was uh, I was trying to find pockets of like, not like uh, you wouldn't obviously go, oh, okay, that, the kick's gonna hit at, at this time. Right. Um, so, you that's, know. That's one thing we can always count on is it's, it's not always gonna be the most straightforward rhythm with Ray, which is dope. Me and Charm were in another room working on a different song. I heard what they were working on, so in my mind, there was this loop that I just ran through earlier in the day. And I was like, this loop actually could maybe work for what we're doing. And so um, went in there and I was like, yo, Germ, pull up this, this one loop and see if it fits. Once we had that established, we continued on with the bass. In my opinion, Trillion, the quality of their stuff is incredible. Everything you've heard so far, you've heard the bass line, the drums mostly, um, that crazy melody that Jerm came up with too. And at this point, my job is like, damn, this sh it's about 80% done. So it needs to fill out a little more. So I added a pad. It really outlines the chords and the feeling that we want it to feel, which is a good time. We didn't want to make it sound darker. Sometimes when you add something, it, it weighs the song down. And in this case, it just kept, kept the energy up. It kept it moving forward. So typically we'll start with like uh, making the biggest portion of uh, the song, which is the hook. And then we pick and choose what we take out to create the verse sequence. Um, and for instance, the down hook or the, the second part of the pre-hook, and it, it's gonna filter building into what is going to be the, the, the post hook or the actual hook. Mm -hmm. um, and Ray added a snap. That's basically just to show you something else is coming. So with that, um, Ray added that, those pianos. When I played it, uh, I remember Jeremy just turning around like, yo, that's dope. So I just, I added that and he's like, how about we layer it with the, with the octave? And that's exactly what you just, you know, what you just heard. With the bridge, because they're such performance and like dance oriented, we went halftime and kind of, we switched up the whole feel of it. I basically just 
took the the, the snare tree, loop, yeah, the loop, um, and I chopped it. And then I used a different um, synth and just changed the progression. It's yeah. Love it, dude. Thanks again, man. Mm -hmm. Held it. And then just, you know, had the bass line follow that. I think the bridge is the... Uh is meant to take you away from the rest of the feeling of the song. And so you're used to hearing, you know, verse, pre, hook, verse, pre, hook. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh dang, where are we going? We're going somewhere else. This is crazy, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden we're back. I went back to 90s r and mm -hmm. It's just fun, like, because, like, especially when um, they're allowing you to do that. It was uh, it was pretty tough just being in the states, playing music like that or music that we grew up listening to and elements that we loved and would love to incorporate, but it wasn't like you know received well. In the states, it's it's not always accepted, you know. And um, aside from artists like, uh, for instance, like Bruno, um, you know, but even still, that was taking a chance. It would be difficult to hear this song on the radio in the states. It's very musical, and it has a lot of changes which in the Korean culture, like they're, like he's saying, they thrive off of that. They love musicality. It, it felt like we were kids again, like allowed to like play things that we grew up listening to and now we're allowed to like do it. So that's what made that fun. That was the inspiration behind that. <laughs> 